What's up, loves? It's your girl, Chi-Chi, and I'm going to be testing a kinky U-part wig from HerGivenHair.com. I'm going to show you guys how I went from this lovely taper haircut that I actually cut on myself to this gorgeous U-part wig, and then I did a twist that on it, and I'm going to show you guys how I did that. So, the first thing as far as this is how the wig came out the pack. I'm like, what am I going to do? Help me, right? But I had it under control. So the first thing I did is I co-washed the wig. Um, as you can see, there's a little mesh part that's still connected when you first get the wig, just to kind of keep the wig together. Um, and so anyways, I went in and I co-washed with the Miss Jessie's leave-in condition. I still rinsed it out just because um, I just don't like the film that conditioners leave. A lot of times the regular conditions are a lot heavier than the leave-ins, but when I do co-wash my wigs, I'll use a regular conditioner sometimes, but um, I'll still rinse it out whether it's a leave-in or not. Um, I used the Curl Enhancing Smoothie by Shea Moisture and the Luster's UB Natural uh, Curl Shaper. I went ahead and just kind of scrunched that all the way through the hair and I detangled the hair. Um, I went in and after I detangled the hair, I twisted it in sections. After I twisted in my, after I twist each one, I always like to go in and do a Bantu knot on the very end because I don't like how, I like when it looks like there's more of a curl on the bottom versus like just it being twisted and it just getting thinner as it um, is twisted towards the end. So I like that cute little springy round curl that you get when you do the Bantu knot on the bottom. So you wanna to continue to twist the hair until you're done. After that, I went ahead and braided the perimeter of my hair. And then I also put a braid around where that leave out is gonna be. Um, I absolutely hate doing parts and making small braids and since it's going to be under a wig no one knows and as you can see I am parting with my hands and these sections are huge I'm not going to leave the wig on for a long time so I wasn't really uh, worried about how big the braids were nor was I worried about how good the parts looked I just did it with my hands threw it in my head there you go in this uh, part I'm just showing you guys how I would I cut the mesh like that I showed you guys at the beginning and I didn't cut it all the way off. I did leave a little bit there just so I could use that to um, sew the wig to. Or I'm sorry, sew the wig to my hair. And I didn't want to, you know, go all the way through the wig because um, I didn't want it to get any weaker. And so this is, I'm placing it on my hair where you can see how I'm going to do it. And then I had my mom sew it on. After I did all that twisting, y'all, I found out that the hair did not match my hair. I swear it looked darker, but it didn't match. So I went to the store and I bought a soft black in this Revlon color and a red color um, in a Garnier Fructis. And I just bought the color because it was like extra on sale. And I just wanted to see if it was going to lift the hair, if it would even show up. Um, I did the red first and then I just only colored the leave out part that was close to, I mean, I'm sorry, I only covered the uh, wig part that uh, was close to my leave out. So I did the edges in the front of the wig and then I did the top to match my leave out. Um, and as you can see, it is a better match. I'm a real stickler and I have OCD when it comes to like, you know, blending. So um, I, I couldn't live with it. Even after I did all those twists, I just couldn't live with that hair being so much lighter than my hair. So at this point, um, to, for my leave out, I'll do a single twist. And then after I take my twist out, then I'll go in and blend it. I also have another video on how I do my blending, but you know, we can look at this one as well. So what I do is I like to take small pieces of my hair and then I'll grab the piece of the weave that corresponds to the front part of my hair or whatever part of the hair I'm on and I will lightly twist it in the two strand twist. You don't want to do it tight because you don't want people to actually be able to detect a um, two strand twist. So you do it really light and you do it in small pieces and you twist it. And I like to do that because especially when the hair is shorter you can't really see where the hair ends. So if the wind blows, um, a piece of your hair and the weave will be together and you won't be able to see your real hair sticking up. So I do this all around the, the leave out. And sometimes you may have to tuck the hair um, underneath the weave and bring the weave on top. It's just all a matter of how you blend. After you're done, you take you take your comb and you just kind of comb out the um, the twist so that you can't really see that it's really a twist. So this is the finished product. As you can see, it barely took on the hair. So a lot of times with the weave, you do have to kind of pre-bleach it, um, just lighten it up a little more and then deposit your color. Here is a close up of how my blending technique works.
you have to really be staring at it to see if it's not, you know, the person's hair. And so I'm happy with it. I think I'm cute feeling myself and everything. And that's it, guys. I mean, um, it's quick. I really like the you part situation. And um, you get it in and get it done. Please rate, subscribe, and comment. And thank you guys for checking it out.